Unit 4. Example. I heard something moving slowly along the walls. I searched for a match in the dark and tried to strike it, but it wouldn't light. This time I was certain. Something was moving in the tunnels, something alive, and it wasn't a rat. A very unpleasant smell came into my nostrils. Finally, I managed to light a match. At first, I was blinded by the flame. Then I saw something creeping toward me. From all the tunnels, shapeless figures crawling like spiders. The match fell from my trembling fingers. I wanted to start running, but I couldn't. Practice 1. Once they arrived at the lake, Maggie took in a deep breath. She was always amazed at how beautiful the lake was this time of year. The water was a crystal blue, which allowed her to see to the bottom at the edge. She stepped out of the car onto the ground and looked at the spot Jamie chose for their picnic. It was perfect. Jamie strolled to the back of his car and took out a picnic basket and blanket from the trunk of his convertible. He spread the blanket beneath an enormous oak tree that shaded a grassy spot. He invited her to sit down beside him. He opened the basket and let her take a peek at the contents. He surprised her with her favorite fried chicken and potato salad. For dessert, he had brought chocolate covered strawberries. She was very pleased with his choices and couldn't be more comfortable here. Practice 2. On the first day of summer vacation, I approached the stone steps of Porter Convalescent Center. The Saturday before, I had attended junior volunteer orientation there. Now I was a completely trained cheery blossom. I straightened my bright pink smock and marched inside. I felt like Florence Nightingale striding into battle to heal and hearten the troops. The volunteer director assigned me to Three South. As we rode the shaky elevator, she explained that this was a long term care unit. Most of its patients would never go home. I felt sick to my stomach as we opened the door to Three South. The foul odor of urine and Lysol overwhelmed me. The head nurse, Miss Tickner, was less than welcoming. Practice 3. One block farther on, Brendan saw a small brick building. Like the rest of the buildings they had passed on this street, it looked deserted. He paused in front of it, not sure why this building had caught his attention. The front door was ajar. He took a deep breath to gather his courage, then pulled it open. No one shouted. There was no sound at all from inside. Wait for me, Brendan whispered. Releasing Dai Yu's hand. He slipped through the opening. There was a subtle odor that Brendan recognized but couldn't place for a moment. When he did, he almost smiled. The room smelled like the library at St. Mary's. Was this a bookstore? Brendan took one cautious step, then another, feeling his way. When his fingertips brushed a leather binding, he did smile. Books! No one would be likely to try to steal books tonight. He and Dai Yu would be safe here. Practice 4. My run slowed to a jog as we approached the gate for our flight to Paris. The plane was still there, but the door to the jetway was shut. The gate agents were quietly sorting tickets. They had already retracted the hood connecting the jetway to the airplane door. Hi, we're on this flight, I panted. 
"'Sorry,' said the agent. "'We're done boarding.' But our connecting flight landed just ten minutes ago. They promised us they would call ahead to the gate. Sorry, we can't board anyone after they've closed the door. My boyfriend and I walked to the window in disbelief. Our long weekend was about to fall to pieces. The plane waited right before our eyes. (laughs) 